This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. The views expressed by guests on this program do not necessarily represent the views of the host or owners of the Doggy Diva Show and do not necessarily constitute endorsement of products. Medical information discussed by guests on this program are those of the guests and is only for informational purposes and should not replace medical advice by your local veterinarian professional. Hi, this is Susan Marie from the Doggy Diva Show. This week, fear-free cat veterinary visits, keeping your pet safe in the summer heat, and quilters helping pets in need, then the rewards from being a special needs pet parent. That's what's on our show this week. Let's get started. Hey, did you hear that? What is that? It's the bark heard round the world. The Doggy Diva Show. Here's Susan Marie. Hi, welcome to the Doggy Diva Show, the show for animal lovers. I'm your host, Susan Marie, and as always, I'm joined by my canine co-hosts, the Doggy Divas themselves, Francesca, Coco, and our newest little diva, Miss Olive. Miss Olive is the cute little Italian greyhound rescue in the picture with the microphone. Thank you for joining us today as we bring the experts in the pet and animal world right to you. Email us at Show at AOL.com, that's D-O-G-G-Y-D-I-V-A, show at AOL.com. We love hearing from you. So go grab a cup of coffee and your pet's favorite treat, and we'll be back in just a moment. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite. Dynavite is nutrition. Pick up two bottles of Lico Chops, get the third bottle free. New improved Lico Chops with omega-3, omega-6, vitamin E, and now six extra direct fed microbials. Even better for the digestive tract and immune system. Try Lico Chops. Buy two, get one free at Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Doggy Diva Show. I mean, we are here with Monica Layton, president of Professional Pet Centers. And Monica, you know, sometimes cats, they get a little nervous when we have to take them to the vet. And sometimes the actual trip to the vet could be even worse than the vet's visit. So can you give us some tips on fear-free cat visits? Absolutely. So that's one thing that, you know, at the veterinary hospital that I work for, we really try to work on is fear-free visits for our feline friends. Because one, you want the visit to go well for the pet and the pet owner. There's nothing worse than, you know, having to bring your pet into the vet and having the visit go horribly. And then as a pet owner, you feel bad that you put your cat through that. And, uh, you know, it's just not fun for anybody. And you want, you know, your pet to get regular exams and be seen. So anything that can make that trip a little easier is all the better for everybody involved. Um, so as far as fear-free vet visits, um, I always start with the number one, you know, thing at home is the carrier, getting the pet to the animal hospital. Um, so keep in mind, many vets do do house calls, um, but if they do not and you're bringing the pet in or maybe the pet's sick and it's something that they can't do at home, um, you know, you're going to need to bring the pet in usually in a carrier. So um, I always suggest that, you know, leave the carrier out in a regular place on a regular visit, a regular basis if you can. Um, I always, you know, if it's one of the ones that are the hard plastic ones or the top sunscrew, um, I'll leave my as like a pet bed um, in the corner of one of the rooms and put blankets and stuff in there and leave little treats in there and leave it out all the time. That way the pet's kind of used to sleeping with it and the only thing that is changing is just the cover going on it when they need to travel, but it's a place that they're used to laying in and they feel comfortable in. Um, The other thing that I also suggest is 
they have, um, Feel Away makes a product, like a pheromone spray. And, um, I always spray the pet's, um, blankets and stuff that are in their carrier, um, at least a half hour before you leave. That'll help take some of the anxiety down as well. So then as long as you can get them to the office, then when you get to the office, a couple of things you can ask your veterinarian about is if they have feline friendly scheduling. For example, at our office, we'll do blocks during the day where we'll have only feline appointments. Um, that way they're not passing dogs coming in and out or they're not hearing dogs barking in other rooms. Um, and that helps, you know, with your feline friends so they're not getting a little anxious. Um, also, you know, in a feline friendly exam room, um, you know, one that they can, you know, put their carrier in that has, you know, maybe pheromone spray on the, um, you know, counter mats and everything, which, you know, we do at our office, you know, to help calm them down and make them, you know, a little more at ease. Um, also, you know, if you bring them in, instead of setting the carrier on the floor to where other pets could walk by it, you know, maybe having a bench high enough to where you can put them up at, you know, level with you. That way they're not interacting with other pets or people walking by. Those are all things that can help alleviate the stress for that visit. Getting that pet in in a, you know, fast manner, of course, you know, obviously helps the, uh, the amount of time that they're, you know, susceptible to interacting with other pets they may not be happy about doing. Um, and then, you know, once they're in there, you know, just going slow and, you know, it, treats work to a certain extent. Um, but oftentimes when they are a little anxious, they, they don't want treats. They don't want to eat. They just kind of, you know, want to get done what they have to get done and go home. So, you know, really just going slow with the cat, making them comfortable, you know, lots of petting, lots of, you know, safety, feeling secure, you know, bringing your own blanket from home and letting them wrap them up in that blanket so they feel safe, um, keeping the pet with you. Um, those are all things that kind of bring down the anxiety of that visit with your cat. Um, another thing also is if those things alone don't do the job and the pet is still a little anxious, you know, talk to your vet about, you know, prescriptions or, you know, maybe trying some composure or some Zilkine, you know, some of the anti-anxiety medications, um, you know, and start them a day or two before your visit in. That way the pet's anxiety can come down even further. Well, Monica, thank you very much. And um, I think that that helped all our feline lovers out there. Get the visit to the vet safe and comfortable. So thank you so very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Coming up, summer's here and summer's hot for you and your pets. Some ideas on keeping cool up next. Put on a perfectly possum pet party. Having an awesome birthday or adoption day celebration for your four-legged friend? Or just want a fun excuse to throw a fun party with your friends from the dog park? Deck out your party with Molly and Bandit Pet Party Accessories, party products designed specifically for pets. There are wearables, including adjustable pet party hats, bow ties, and tutus. The photo prop kits include funny glasses and hats. The party supplies and decorations include coordinating table covers, party banners, cake decorations and treat bowls, cups and bags. Everything you need to create great memories and Instagram-worthy photos. They're available in two colorful themes, Tropical and Fireman. It's a dog's life. Celebrate it with Molly and Bandit Pet Party at mollyandbanditpetparty.com slash petlife. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Doggy Diva Show. Well, summer is here, and with the sunny skies comes summer heat. And today we welcome our nutrition contributor, Kim Gablin, Senior Marketing Director at Bill Jack Foods, to tell us all about keeping our pets safe in this hot summer heat. Welcome, Kim. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Oh, our pleasure. Now, you know, it's really... We sometimes we get all excited because it's summer and we have all these festivities and things to do and we want to get out with our pets and stuff. But sometimes that doesn't always work that way. Can you discuss some of the ways that we could keep our pets safe during this uh, summer heat? 
Yeah, you know, I think it's really important, like you said, you know, we want to get outside, we want to be able to do things, but we really need to think about what effect they might have on our dogs. And so, you know, things to think about are, you know, uh, especially watching out for heat stroke, right? So, you know, if they're overheating, um, that's really kind of an important thing to think about because, um, you know, dogs don't sweat like you and I do. And so, you know, they, you know, I, I, um, you know, we probably talked about this before, but they tend to sweat through their paws a little bit. Um, and that's, you know, and that's one of the places, obviously, where they're oftentimes touching warm things, right? Hot things like the, like the pavement. And so it's, you know, sometimes hard for them to keep cool, um, when it's so warm. And so it's good to be able to look out for those, you know, kind of warning signs of, of excessive heat. So, you know, if you, maybe, for example, they're, um, getting a little bit sluggish. Or they seem to be uh, getting disoriented when they're outside. You know, that's a sign that you should, you know, be kind of watching out for. Um, if their tongue is bright red or they're drooling a lot um, or frothing at the mouth, that can be a sign that they're they're getting overheated and going into heat stroke. Or if they're having a hard time kind of walking, so like if they're staggering or if they might be vomiting. You know, those are all things that those are things you want to watch out for. That you want to go out and have fun, right? But you want to make sure that you're not going going past that and having um, having them outside in the heat too long. Now, what are some ways to uh, prevent your pet from overheating? I mean, it, it's great. Those signs are, like, so important. So I hope that people are taking notes on this because it's really important to know the signs. But what are some of the ways to prevent our pets from overheating in the summer heat? Well, you know, I think that there's a couple, you know, five kind of different ways to think about when you're outdoors doing things, you know, what to do and what not to do. So, for example, of course, we all know the big no-no is never, ever, ever leave your dog in the car. And so this is, you know, this is always one of those things where I just hate to hear all the, the tragedies on the oh. on the news, you know, that kind of thing. You know, you want to be able to keep them safe. And, you know, even in a 70-degree uh, day in a, in a car, the, the temperature can get up over 100 degrees very quickly. And dogs' bodies can't get over 103 degrees. Otherwise, they get, that's when they start really getting very sick with heat stroke. So it's really important um, not to leave them in the car, um, because again, they can get, it, it can get up to over 150, 170 degrees in maybe 15 or 20 minutes. So, so it's important to keep them, keep them with you if you can, um, or not take them at all in the first place. Um, you know, secondly, I think it's about water, right? You know, um, certainly, um, being sensitive about nutrition, you know, water is one of those key ingredients that we all need to have when we're out. And so being able to take something that you can give your dog, you know, there are so many cool little things that they've created that you can take for water bottles for dogs that you can actually, you know, pour it in there and they can lap it up. Or, you know, there's so many foldable things you could just fold in your pocket and give them some of your water. So it's just really important to make sure that you bring some water with you uh, and that you're paying attention to how hydrated they are. You know, if you're, if you're seeing them have kind of dry, sticky gums or, you know, again, they're getting some kind of drooling or their eyes look like they're a little bit sunken. Those are the those are kind of the, the things you look for for dehydration. So make sure you bring, you know, a bottle of water for you, a bottle of water for your, your dog so that you kind of everybody stays nice and hydrated. You know, and that's really an important tip. In her in Olive's carrier, because I take her with me everywhere, so she's always with me. Mm-hmm. I I have it's a little bitty collapsible dog bowl and yeah. I have buy those little stubs, you know, the little bitty waters. And uh-huh. I put it right in the pocket of her um, carrier because it's, you never know, we could get stuck in traffic, you don't know what's going to happen, you don't know if you're out at a dog, you know, dog park or at an event, how warm it's going to be. So I, that's such a wonderful tip because they can't get dehydrated. I mean, that's one of the, you know, that's a that's a horrible thing and overheated. Yeah. Yeah, and it happens so fast, you know, mm-hmm. especially I know that, you know, you and I both have smaller dogs. It certainly can happen very, very fast, especially in a smaller dog or, you know, in dogs that have, you know, a lot of fur maybe that are more, you know, that are more winter-oriented dogs, right? So if they have, you know, heavier coats, it can happen pretty fast, even though dogs usually have, you know, try their best to kind of keep their temperature as yeah. even as they can. Um, it's also it's also really important to... Um, think about when you're going out on walks, you know, what time are you going out? You know, certainly as the temperatures now are getting into the 80s and the 90s and the hundreds for some of us, you know, around the country, you know, it's really important to think about, you know, trying to get out earlier or later potentially for a walk. So maybe before 8 a.m., you know, when it's still a little bit cooler out or after 6 p.m., it's important to think about where are you walking? You know, if you can walk in your neighborhood on grass, or you can take them to the park and walk on grass or on a trail, that's oftentimes cooler than the asphalt, you know, or the concrete. And so um, I saw a really cool tip. I don't know if you've heard about this tip, but I, I saw this really cool tip from the Moon Valley Training Center, and they said you should 
use the back of your hand and put it on the pavement for five seconds. And if you can't hold your hand there for five seconds easily, that means it's going to be too hot for your dog's paws. It could potentially burn their paws. It, whether it be, you know, cement or the the black asphalt, it, it mm-hmm. can that hot temperature even though it's later in the day that temperature could still be it could be so hot on their little pads because it holds the heat so that's a great yeah. tip yeah no i thought that, that was kind of a, mm. a neat way to, to kind of a quick way to be able to tell yeah. if, it's, if it's really hot or not and so i know that um i know that that's kind of a, a quick way to do that and you know they've actually created like lots of socks these days that if you know if you do like to walk your dog and it's on warmer pavement, you know, obviously you need to be careful and have that water with you. But there's lots of uh, different kinds of booties that not, aren't just for winter, but are actually for um, the warm months as well. So there are ways to protect your dog if, you're, if your dog doesn't mind wearing booties um, and you're careful about being out there in the heat. So I think that that's, that's always a, a nice thing to do. But it, it is really important to think about that asphalt and, and look at that. And um, it's true. You were talking about the booty. I mean, when I had my big greyhounds, we they each had their pair of booties and we used them for the winter months. And then we had a pair for the summer months because we take them on long walks and they, you know, sometimes you can't always control where you're walking and it it, it could be hot. So booties, I, you know, hey, accessories, we're in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and, and plus, you know, you just, you, you look so stylish in them. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's always fun they to have, have your dog like, kind of looking stylish and people watching you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, all about and, that. <laughs> 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 and I think it's also it's also you know we also need to be careful about the things that are outside too when you're when you're out with your dog. Um, certainly, there's a lot more fertilizer around. Um, you know, garage doors may be open. Dogs may be able to get into things in the garage doors, or maybe like in the winter time, you, you know, they're not out and about as much. And so you want to make sure that you know you're also watching people's lawns. So when you're walking, you know, a lot of times people when they get their uh, lawn treated with fertilizer, they'll put flags on their lawns. And so it's important to kind of keep your um, your heads up, your eyes open, and kind of see if they've got their flags out on the corners. Because, you know, I know sometimes I'm walking and I'm not realizing that I'm coming up on a flag. So it's real important, you know, you can actually watch and you can kind of keep your dog off their lawn so you don't have to worry about them, you know, getting into any kind of pesticide residue or fertilizer residue on their paws when you're out walking. And, and you can always wipe them real quick when they get in. I'm sure it'd be nice and, you know, with a nice cool towel, it would probably feel nice. And um, it would also be a great way to kind of clean their paws off in case They've gotten um, onto any lawns where there are any fertilizer. That's important too, because what do they do? They the paws go to their face, so that's really yes. important. And uh, yeah, I, I I am a big proponent of wiping their feet whenever they come in. So. Yeah, you know, there, there are a lot of uh, fertilizers out there these days that, that can be safe and, and actually don't have a lot of chemicals in them and are more natural, but not everybody uses those. So it's mm-hmm. good to kind of keep a head, heads up and kind of keep your dog as protected as you can from getting anything in their mouth um, or on their body that they don't need to have. As far as just keeping our pets healthy throughout the year, you have any good tips on that? We know, obviously, it's important, as we talked about, to have water and make sure your your dog is well hydrated, but it's also important to make sure that they're getting the great foundational nutrition that they need day in and day out to be healthy. So um, so the food they eat plays play such a, a large role in their health over their lifetime. So it's important to make sure that you're feeding a good, high-quality food that has a, a, a real good, solid, high-quality protein as the first ingredient, uh, and then, you know, making sure that you're also limiting the amount of, of human food that you're giving them, right? You're not giving them a whole lot of extra calories uh, that they may not need or exposing them to maybe foods that you may not know are not good for them. Absolutely. And as we always talk about, you know, the with Bill Jack, you have so many foods to offer for all the different kinds of eaters that we have out there, the different, you know, um, whether it be grain free, the picky eater. I mean, you have there's so many to select from. Can you tell the listeners a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, we know that every dog is a little bit different, right? So we really work on providing foods that are really help you kind of meet the needs of your, your dog. And like you said, you know, we have a picky no more formula. So if you have a dog that is picky, we have a, a food that actually um, is chicken and chicken liver and dogs love chicken liver. You know, they, they love them in our treats. And so we really felt like that kind of gives it that extra boost that a lot of dogs really need to kind of want to eat and be excited about eating. Um, and so that's kind of a great food to be able to feed, but we also, also have different life stage foods. So whether your dog's a puppy or an adult or um, maybe they're a little bit overweight and you want to, you know, kind of watch their weight. 
or they're a little bit older. You know, we have a, a senior select formula. So there's, there's really a lot of different options, you know, grain free. If maybe you or your dog has a sensitivity that you don't want to be around, um, you know, grains and you want to skip the grains in their food. So there's really kind of a lot of options depending on what you think is the right thing for your dog and the right thing that, you know, would help them be healthy, you know, day in and day out. Well, and also, of course, you know that we love the Little Jacks, but also we're a big proponent of the probiotic spray because it just is so easy to use. It's It gets the those the good, you know, probiotics into their body, but there's no powder, there's nothing. I mean, it's like really a great tool for the pet parent as well as a healthy um, supplement enhancement for your pets. Yeah, you know, I love our Breakthrough Probiotics. Um, it's called Breakthrough Biotics Probiotic Food Spray. It is fantastic. I have been using it with my dog since he was, I think, six months old, and now he's five and a half. And it's just, you know, a spray once in the morning for his food and once in the evening with his food. He loves it. It keeps his stools, you know, small and firm and healthy. Very important. Which is great. Yeah, I know. I always say that you have to look in the backyard, right? And, and everything's going on in the backyard, mm. right? And you have nice, small, firm stools. <laughs> Life is good, right? Your dog's digestion is healthy and is looking good. So that's really an important sign. So it's, it's great to be able to give them um, some additional probiotics, right? Things that they don't normally get in their diet every day. Those are the good bacteria that kind of help your, keep your gut healthy. So it's good for digestive health and it's also good for immune uh, uh, system function support. So, so that's both, both, both things are really important to keep your dog healthy. So, and, and it tastes great. My dog loves the taste of it. Mm-hmm. So we get so many great, great compliments and I'm so glad that, that your dogs love it too. Oh, because yeah. it, it's really such a fun and easy product. Um, it's great to be able to give them something that's good for them and have them absolutely love it. I think that that's wonderful. And as I always say, if it's, if it makes the pet parents life easier to apply or give them this and give that the pets will love it. It takes the stress out of the whole, you know, procedure because sometimes it's powdery or, you know, you've got to yeah. pill them and it's just, no, Mm-mm. this yeah. is easy. Yeah, we know we're all, uh-uh. that, that's, no, that's right. Whenever we're thinking about products, we're always thinking about our two footed customers mm-hmm. <laughs> and yes. our four footed customers, right? Cause we have to, we have to make them both happy. And so <laughs> this is one of those products and just like our food is one of those products that, um, you know, we really want to make, put out products that make everybody happy. Um, not just our four footed folks, but, um, our two footed and our four footed. Exactly. <laughs> so now where can the listeners go if they want to, these are great tips and it's so helpful. Where can the listeners go to learn more about, uh, Bill Jack and everything that they have? Cause there's so much that you guys have for the pet parent. Yeah, you know, um, well, you can always come out to our website. It's billjack.com. It's B-I-L-J-A-C.com. And there's, when you're out there, there's a great way to sign up for uh, monthly emails with, like, tips to come out and the opportunity to request coupons. Uh, you can also uh, certainly come out to any of our digital spaces. So we're out on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. You can follow us and then we can actually push information out to you whenever we post some things. So it, you know, we really try to make it very easy to be able to get connected to us and, and see the kinds of things we have. And, you know, we just want to make it fun and easy for you as a dog owner, right? As, as somebody who loves, who's, you know, a pet parent who mm-hmm. really loves their dog and, and really knows that they're a part of their family and they just want to do everything they can for them. Well, and that's what we find to be important in our household. And that's why we love of, uh, talking to you and I, I you always know I tell everybody all the listeners know I love getting my newsletter I'm signed up and I look <laughs> forward to it so I love it again Kim thank you so much these are great helpful tips I hope that listeners out there this gets you a great start to your summer because um, these are things that uh, we all need to know about and we all need to keep in mind so um, enjoy the summer but let's keep our pets safe in this hot summer heat yes here's wishing you a safe and, and healthy summer yes absolutely thank you so much Kim thank you and we'll be back in just a moment Hi, Doggy Diva Show listeners. Susan Marie here to take just a half a minute to let you know how much we appreciate your being with us every week to hear great dog tips you can use with your pet, some great stories about rescues, fostering, and some heartwarming stories about second chances for pets who are now in loving forever homes. Be sure to go to our website, thedoggydiva.com, to see pictures of Miss Olive and other dogs we talk about on the show and get to know us a little better. That's thedoggydiva.com, D-O-G-G-Y. We appreciate your feedback too. Okay, let's get back to the show. Coming up, 
Are you a quilter and want to help some pets in need? We've got the answer. Stay with us. What if you could protect the life of your cat with something so simple and affordable that you already use every day? Get ready for the evolution of kitty litter. It's Kitty Litter. Along with all the features you've come to expect from your kitty litter, Pretty Litter's patented and scientific formula will also monitor your cat's health and detect illnesses early while providing industry-leading odor control. Two kitty litters, same cat, same price. But there's one important difference. Pretty Litter reacts to your cat's waste by detecting health issues simply by changing color. And the key is that Pretty Litter detects these issues before your cat shows symptoms of physical illness or pain likely saving you major dollars in vet bills while protecting the health of your cat. What do you think, little guy? Ready to switch litter? Pretty Litter. Colorful insight into your cat's health. Go to prettylittercats.com forward slash cat 101 or use coupon code cat 101 to get 20% off your first subscription order. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Doggy Diva Show. We truly appreciate when homeless animals benefit from the kindness of special people those who pay it forward, especially in times of disaster and need. Well, a team of volunteers did just that after Hurricane Sandy and continues to be of assistance whenever disaster strikes, helping animals in times of need, doing what they love to do, making kennel quilts. So special, and it means so much to the animals and also those who are actually making the quilts. That's what the Quilt Pattern Magazine Small Kennel Quilt Team are doing, springing into action whenever disaster strikes. And today we welcome the Marketing Director of Quilt Pattern Magazine, Nan Baker, to the show. Hi, Nan. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Thank you for having me. Oh, our pleasure. You know, what you do is like so interesting. And can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, okay. Well... Uh, again, I, I work with the uh, uh, Quilt Pattern Magazine, the marketing director, and uh, as a, well, the way the kennel quilts got started was I am a former disaster responder for the Humane Society of the United States, and uh, when I was working disasters, I would, of course, we'd have to bring the animals to the shelters after they'd been rescued, and I noticed that a lot of the smaller animals, like your cats, end up sitting in their litter boxes and because they didn't like the uh, feel of the steel cages that had been set up, you know, when you're dealing with yeah. a great amount of animals. And that's not good for them. And it, uh, so we had uh, an interior designer who called us and said, in North Carolina during the floods, and she said, I have some sample, uh, sample carpets. Would you all like them? And we said, yes. So we put them in the kennels, and immediately the cats got out of their litter boxes. And that just kind of stuck with me. And so when I, uh, years later, when I started with the Quilt Pattern Magazine, we're all animal lovers, and we wanted to do something to help animals. So we decided to make a kennel quilt and have a free pattern on our website and for people when they take their um, pets to the veterinarian. Just a little soft spot in a, you know, otherwise maybe a plastic kennel or something like that. So we did that. We offered that on our website in July of 2012. And then Hurricane Sandy hit. And as a result, um, we checked with the Pet Finder Foundation and said, do you think we could send kennel quilts or their shelters that have been affected? And they said, yes. And so they gave us quite a few, uh, a list of about five. And so we didn't have anything organized. We just put a call out to our 
subscribers, readers, and over 100 kennel quilts were sent. Wow. Well, everybody was just kind of floored, and the Pet Finder Foundation said, let's keep this up. And so we did, and here we are now, and over 21,000 kennel quilts have been made. Oh, my gosh. Now, how many people yes. do you have on your team? Because this is all volunteer work. It's all volunteer. <laughs> we have over 1,500 volunteers. Oh, absolutely amazing. And they're from all over the country and uh, Canada. Wow. So it's, it's kind of an international program. And it's a very important program, and you know, um, you know, when you look at your website, when you look at your Facebook page, you see these beautiful little quilts, and the animals are absolutely loving them. And I always say that if you're doing something that you love, and if you bring that to whatever it is that you're doing, and you know, in in our case, it's obvious always for the animals, that love goes into it. And I believe that what all of you are doing, that love goes into the quilts that you're making, and the animals pick up on that. I mean, it's such a it's such a loving, giving thing that you're doing for these animals. I, that's why I felt it was so important to get you on to let the country know what it is you do and you know you're here to help you're here to help all shelters any disasters good lord we're going into we're in hurricane season right now and there's disasters right. throughout the united states so i want to make sure everybody knows who you are and what it is that you do because something like this is something i don't think that people think of all the time and it's a and it's a wonderful um, assist to the shelters and for those that um, that are in the in the middle of the disaster. Well, exactly. And the the thing about it is, if you take care of someone's pet during a disaster, you are taking care of that person mm -hmm. because that's uh, they're going through a traumatic time, and that's one less thing they have to worry about. If they know their pet's safe and being taken care of then they can get on with other things that, you know, that are hitting them in the face, so to speak, at that point in time. Because they're truly just uh, in, in a state of shock when you, you know, like after the fires or, or, or floods, when you've lost everything. And this was one thing after Hurricane Sandy, uh, one of the shelters took some of the kennel quilts down to Ocean City, New Jersey, which had been flooded. I mean, mm -hmm. these people lost everything. And they were absolutely amazed that their their pets had been remembered. All of a sudden, they had this pretty quilt for their pet or for their carrier because many times after disasters, the pets have to live in the carriers because they don't, you know, they're displaced. Where does the material come from? I mean, do pe can people donate material, or um, how, how does that work? Well, as, as a matter of fact, most quilters have scraps. Uh, if you're a quilter, you have a lot of fabric, and you have a lot of scraps. So this is a great way to use up scraps, uh, you know, whether they match or not, because the animals don't care. <laughs> They don't care about the colors, and they don't care if the seams match or if the points match and all the little quilting details. They just want a soft place uh, to nap and make biscuits. So <laughs> anyway, they that's the whole point. Um, but a lot of times, we do have companies that send fabric to different people. There are a lot of quilt guilds who donate fabric to to the different people in their community, and sometimes that that's a lot of the quilt guilds and quilt groups. It's a community project. So I know we have a person in South Carolina. Her um, quilting group, her the long armors, the people who have the big quilting machines, they have leftover batting, so they donate all that batting to her to make kennel quilts. Wow. And she has done like almost 4,000 kennel quilts. I mean, she and she has groups that help her too. But so everybody kind of works together when they find out, oh, you do this? Well, I'm going to send this to you. And I have fabric companies who, you know, will send me fabrics and I will try to spread it out to people who make kennel quilts. I also had uh, a lady from 
from Louisiana who said, our quilting group, we have all these scraps. Can you use them? She said, I mean, we have bins of scraps. Mm -hmm. And I said, absolutely. Where are you located? And she said, well, I'm in Baton Rouge. I said, well, I'm in the Panhandle. (laughs) Well, we met in Navarre and exchanged (laughs) the fabric bins. And then I have uh, dispersed that around the area to different people who make kennel quilts. Nan, how do people, like, let's just say we're talking about all these different groups, which is so wonderful because everyone's coming together for a common cause. How do people, like, volunteer, or, like, if you are in a quilting group, how do you volunteer to do this? Because this is definitely a very special way of paying things forward for the animals. We have uh, on our, uh, the Kennel Quilt page, which is kennelquilts.com, and that's quilts with an S. You can sign up to be a member of the Kennel Quilt team. And once you do that, then if there's a call, we put out a call, you'll receive an email, but we also post it on the Facebook page, and that way you can get involved. I think wow. that that answers it perfectly because um, there's a place to go. And I mean, in, in your Facebook page, it's, it's very clear. And also on your website, it's very clear. And it also shows those cute, <laughs> cute quilts. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about the magazine itself? Or in our eighth year, we're an online uh, digital magazine. Our editor started, uh, our, well, there were co-editors. Uh, they started this in as a result of... They wanted to publish a magazine that was eco-friendly and also that uh, had a lot of patterns in it with not a lot of ads because sometimes... It's truly for the quilter that really wants to quilt. Right, exactly. And the thing about it is we have 12 issues a year and when the issues come out, if you see a, a... pattern or a quilt that you want to make, then all you have to do is just print that one pattern rather than the whole magazine. That's and great. that saves on paper. It does. So, it's very sustainable. Exactly. Exactly. And also, it doesn't take up, you can save the file on your computer, and it doesn't take up shelf space. So that's the reason it started, and we have staff all over the country, including Canada, and we get together for staff meeting every two weeks via Skype, and we've all become fast friends, and we've never met each other. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) I just absolutely love that. Now, for the listeners who want to learn more about, learn more about the magazine, which is the Quilt Pattern Magazine, to learn more about um, the kennel, what you're doing with the kennel, uh, the kennel quilts, and um, to learn more about you, where can the listeners go? Uh, they can go to the Quilt Pattern Magazine. Our website is quiltpatternmagazine.com. And there uh, you can see everything that the magazine does. And also, it, you know, if, if you're a designer, if you want to, have you ever thought about maybe, hey, I have a pattern, I wonder if I could be published. You can submit the pattern to us. Also, if you want to write an article, we'd love for you to write an article, Susan. Oh, I would love to. (laughs) You can submit that uh, to the magazine. And, I mean, they're just all... The one thing that is very special about our magazine, we have a group of our subscribers called Pattern Pastiche. And this is... um, part of the magazine where you we have chats every uh, Friday and Saturday mornings and we have different groups set up there is a kennel quilt group on this that when we had a kennel quiltathon in early May we had the whole weekend and people were talking to each other back and forth you know by by the chat rooms yeah and it, it's a way to get connected, and lots of friendships have been made for this. And so it's a uh, it's a wonderful resource, and it's a, a it's a community of quilters gathered together, and it's just a lot of fun, and it's a lot of help if somebody's got to say, hey, I don't know how to do this. Then usually there'll be people right there who's like, you can do this or go here, see this. So it's again, it's another way to be involved with other quilters 
you know, without ever having to leave your house. Yeah, not oh, that that's, that's great. So, yeah, but it's wonderful because it builds up that network, and and like you said, it's a community. And and again, it's it's so great what you're doing. I'm so happy that you're on the show. I'm so happy that you've told, especially the the community of quilters out there, if you want to get involved. Please go to quiltpatternmagazine.com and learn all about this. Learn about the things that Nan's talking about. And you could see some of the great quilts and some of the shelters that are being worked with. And if also, if you're a person who knows a shelter or if you're a shelter person who would love to speak with Nan and her group about getting some of these quilts, what a great opportunity this is. And, um, and then I just want to thank you for being our guest today on the show. And I also want to thank you and that wonderful community that you're in for helping the animals in such a special and, and even more importantly, a loving way, because I believe that, especially after talking to you, that all of the love that's going into those quilts, those animals know it. So I thank you very much. I thank you for being our guest. And, um, and I'll get that article to you. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up, the rewards of being a special needs pet parent. Stay tuned. Begging to hear more of your favorite show? <laughs> Full episodes of all our shows are available on demand. Go to PetLifeRadio.com to fetch our entire lineup of possum pet podcasts. Also, dig us up in iHeartRadio and iTunes. Let's talk pets. <laughs> Live and on demand only from Pet Life Radio. Welcome back, everyone, to the Doggy Diva Show. Every once in a while, a book comes along that deeply touches your hearts and your soul, and you just know that when you finish it, you feel like a better person for having read the book. Well, I found the book that each story has inspiring and heartwarming stories about animal adoption, more specifically and important to me, special needs animal adoptions. In the book, Gretchen Dale wrote something that I have marked permanently in my copy of the book that says, special needs animals take us out of ourselves and put us in a different place where the world is gentle and caring and where the sun shines even on a rainy day and loving these animals is loving yourself and respecting these animals is respecting yourself. I just have to tell you that I absolutely love that and I love the stories of all the animals in these books. I am going to tell you that I am welcoming today Gretchen Dale, the author of this wonderful, inspiring work. So, hey, Gretchen, welcome to the Doggy Diva Show. Thank you very much, Emily. It's real to be here. You have a very diverse background. Can you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? Really, in my whole life, I was an executive in New York City uh, running a home textile company. And when I moved out to Connecticut, um, I just decided to go over to our shelter and donate some towels. And lo and behold, that was, I don't know, 15 years ago. And uh, so I started to volunteer, and that was the whole beginning of my uh, entry into the world of rescue and, and rescue animals and special needs animals. So it was a total opposite of what I was doing on a day-to-day basis. I think that's why I probably... I could tell by your voice, you're very passionate about it. And this book is so great and so inspiring. And of course, I have a special needs dog. She's my little co-host, Miss Olive. And in reading the book, I was so touched and so inspired by all of these stories. Can you tell us what the inspiration was for writing this? Our shelter never had time to deal with these animals or to find the right homes for them. And so myself and one of the other ladies at the shelter, one of the volunteers, got going and trying to find homes for these animals. And we did. Uh, and it depended on what their situation was, how special they had to be. And we would always stay in touch with the people. And what happened was I would have dinner with them or a lunch with them after and say, how's it going? And they said, every one of them said to me, this is absolutely the best thing I have ever done in my life. And I thought, wow, you know, I, I know I feel that way, but I didn't know other people felt that way. And so I sort of thought about it and said, well, you know, maybe there are a lot of other people like this. And if we get the word out for those who don't really understand, you know, don't know where to go get a special needs animal, we'll get more interest in the adoptions. And that was really my, um, my, really my impetus for, 
for writing the book was to get more special needs animals understood and adopted. Well, I'm telling you, what, what you've done here is you've laid out the groundwork for people to be inspired and um, proud to have a special needs animal. Now, in the story, you have a number of little stories. Were there any that were um, that stand out to you, any of the pets? Well, you know, it's interesting because there are some in there that were actually, that I actually fostered for a while, and then there were some that I just met through the, at the shelter, and then there were some that I met through people telling me stories that I didn't have any real contact with, and then met them and went, wow, this is just an amazing story that needs to be told. But I guess I'd have to say my very favorite one is Goose. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a little Pomeranian uh, mix, and I came in the shelter one day, and I thought we had somebody had dropped off a goose. That's what it sounded like when he barked. And I went running down the hall going, what is that? And this little tiny bitty thing came running out. And he was the most adorable thing in the world. And I took him to my vet because we didn't really have a vet who could figure out what was wrong with him. I took him to my vet and he said to me, Gretchen, he's really, I mean, he's really old and he's got a heart murmur, but he is one really special little guy. And we both agreed. We didn't know how much time he had left. And um, I found a wonderful mom for him who, the day he passed away, she called me on the phone and we both sat there crying. But he had, I think, almost three wonderful years with her before it happened. And, and he died in a wonderful place with somebody who loved him to death. So I can't ask for more than that. <laughs> no. And in reading the story, you know, I was, gosh, I was moved to tears, at, too, because at the end of it, when he did pass away, and she was so compassionate and so aware of what was going on. And it was really something. And as all the stories, they, you know, they they were very, uh, they kind of bring a tear. Some of them tear of joy, some of them tear of sadness, but they're all very emotional, very well written stories that bring out the best in what that animal is. So, and well, my- the people who adopt. Them. Right. Well, my other favorite one is Mac, who was a big German Shepherd, yep. who a friend of mine told me about and told me the story. And I called his mom and said, would she be interested in being interviewed in the book? And she said, fine. And I went down to her house and she gave me special instructions of how to pull in the driveway, how to get into the house, don't knock, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So when I got in the house, she and I were talking in the kitchen and she said, okay, I want to go get Mac. I'm like, okay. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And she went upstairs, and I'm sitting in the kitchen, and, you know, I've been around a lot of animals in my life. I heard this thing coming down the stairs, and it sounded like a deer. I mean, it was, and I thought, oh, boy, I'm dead meat. Well, I just sat there, and I didn't look at him, and I didn't respond in any way. And the next thing I knew, he took that big snout of his and put it right under my arm. Mm -hmm. And so he was a very tough, tough animal. Um, but he was just 11 and a half, and, you know, people who loved him just couldn't get enough of him. Well, and that's a case of, like, a little behavioral. Sometimes they're special needs. They don't have to be physically special needs. Right. They can be behavioral, and with the right amount of work right. and love, um, it's amazing how they can turn around. And he, what a gorgeous German shepherd he is. Oh and my he gosh. was he was a behavior. They had, mm-hmm. He had been, um, he'd been a junkyard dog. Uh, where he was patrolling and protecting literally a junkyard and uh, was taken by the animal control officer who literally thought, this is um, we're never going to be able to adopt this dog out. And these people who had had a German Shepherd before found out about him and said, okay, let's give it a try. And she tells the story, and driving home from New Jersey, he ate the whole back seat of the car. <laughs> And they still have him and love him. <laughs> that is like, that is a true love story. <laughs> so, of course, he's come a long way under their tutelage. His behavior is a lot better now. But uh, she said they have no squirrels, no animals in their yard, and no delivery men will come up their driveway. <laughs> I would say that, yeah, he uh, his his experience as a junkyard dog has paid off in, uh, in <laughs> Matthew. Yeah, so great, immensely. So, you know, we talk about the special needs dogs. What can readers do to learn more about adopting special needs pets, which of course is something very near and dear to me. Well, I think it's, you know, you can read about, uh, for instance, you can go online and see animals that are uh, at shelters and they'll say they're special needs. And special needs can be a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. It could be something as simple as maybe a pill twice a day in an expensive medication here and there, or it could be something that's much more difficult. Um, uh, our little boy, Tango, who's on the cover of the book, we had him for about six months before he even got diagnosed, and he had something called mega esophagus, which at that time wasn't very well known, but it's where they can't 
swallow their food. You should have seen us trying to learn teach him how to eat. My my vet said, I think it's mega esophagus. And we had to teach him to eat standing up. I saw I, that. I, when I read the story <laughs> and saw the picture of him, he was actually eating like table level off of the table. Yes. So that is yes. like well, that, amazing that that could even be figured he, out. Well, now they have actual chairs for them. In those days, they didn't, where they put, they go right in the chair and they sit up and they have to sit for about 20 minutes after. So we taught him to sit, sit, uh, eat off a ladder. And then we make him stand there and we play with him and do everything so he could, he wouldn't disappear. And then he got into it that he thought that was pretty cool. But trying to find somebody who could deal with that, that's a much more complicated thing because um, it's a very difficult thing. They tend to, they will sometimes uh, regurgitate the food and it also can lead to pneumonia and things like that. So that took a really dedicated, very special person um, to adopt him. So they go the range. They're not all difficult and they're not and some of them are more difficult but and it just depends on on you know how you feel about it the, the ladies who adopted him when he passed away finally seven years later said it is still it, in spite of everything it's the best thing we ever ever did and he has a whole following of people who love him even to this day <laughs> yeah he, he had a nice little inspirational story as all viewers did but yeah and you know I've been doing animal uh, rescue for many, many years. And in in reading the book, I did learn a little more about different um, things that, you know, affect the animals, whether it be physically or behaviorally. So your book is not only inspirational, but it also kind of opens the eyes um, to people who are in adoption or who, uh, you know, have special needs dogs as to other things that are out there. Um, right. So what I want to ask is where can the readers go to learn more about you? to learn more about Tales of Joy, which is this wonderful, wonderful book of story of special needs animals and those terrific, wonderful people who adopt them. Where can they purchase your book? The easiest way is really on Amazon.com or AmazonBooks.com. That's the easiest and fastest way to get it, and they also have the best price of anybody around. <laughs> uh, we do have it in some of the bookstores locally around my Connecticut area. For anybody who's uh, in Connecticut, we have it at J. Julia and um, Breakwaters and Mix and a few other stores. A lot of the, the gift stores picked it up, which was sort of fun, and have it in their um, their fancy animal section here where they have collars yeah. and leashes and so forth like that. So that's been kind of fun. They've, they've done that. And we've also done a lot with it at events where we take the book out. I'll do a book signing at an event. I donate the book and the entire amount of uh, we yes, $20 for the book. Um, and that whole thing goes to whatever we're supporting that day, like the Dan Cosgrove Shelter here locally. Um, we've done a bunch of those. And it's amazing how nice people are and how much they want the book when they know that the entire amount of it is going to the local When you're local paying shelter. it forward. And that says yeah. so much about yeah. you, and it also says so much about the people that are purchasing it. Well, Gretchen, I want to thank you for being our guest. And I thank also want to thank you for bringing light to something that is very special to me uh, and so many of our listeners, which is special needs rescue and adoption, or as I like to call them, especially needed. So they're not really <laughs> special that. needs. I love saying they're especially needed. So um, I like that better. I like that better. <laughs> but if, 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 if you and I have become so involved with it, it really, I think, would... Would, I think anybody who has any interest or compassion for animals mm -hmm. would really should investigate it. They will find it's not anything but a wonderful experience. So you, you've had it and I've had it. So. I do. I, and I swear and attest to it. And in reading your book, I like said, oh, my gosh, I found a sister here. So it was <laughs> great. And Gre Gretchen, it's been wonderful talking to you. And I wish you much success with the book. And again, the book is called Tales of Joy. That's T-A-I-L-S of Joy. <laughs> and it's by Gretchen Dale. And for those of you that, are, that just want a great uplifting book or if you want to learn more about special needs pets or you just want to, I'm saying it's a great coffee table book too because it's a beautiful book and it's beautifully photographed as well as beautifully written. So, Gretchen, I thank you so much. Well, thank you. And thank you, Susan, for all you do. It's, it's wonderful having other people who feel the same way. So thank you as, just as much. We would like to thank our guests this week. And also, as our doggy divas always say, please love your pets because they love you unconditionally. And please remember to adopt, foster, spay, neuter, and microchip. And as always, please have a great Diva Week, everyone. That's all for this episode of The Doggy Diva Show. To find out more, go to our website, thedoggydiva.com.
Also, find us on our Facebook page, The Doggy Diva Show, and tell your fellow dog lovers about it. Don't miss Susan Marie, Miss Olive, and the Doggy Divas right here for the next episode. See you again soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.